Our next presentation bears the title, To Beautify or Blemish the World, Why Christian Artists Need to be Making Beautiful Art. Please welcome Lily Caddo. There is a distinct and unique sensitivity in the soul of man. Some primitive chord that trembles when struck by beauty. We are drawn to the beautiful. We know beauty somehow and we yearn for it. Yet when we encounter the beautiful on earth, it is only a reflection of the Lord's character. The transcendent, beautiful melody playing in our spirits cries out for resolve and wonders why we cannot find satisfaction here. The reflections are not meant to satisfy the cravings of the soul. Rather, Reflections are meant to lead man to contemplation, that by beholding beautiful things, he might discover the source of sensitivity in his spirit. It is not that our creator is beautiful. Rather, something is beautiful because it has embodied the nature of the Lord. So I argue, when man attempts to make reflections of his own, namely, when man produces art, he ought to manifest the creator's character and edify the beholder to create something truly beautiful. A work of art is a creative commentary or expression manifested into the physical world. The more a work reflects God's character, the more beautiful it is. Now, no human artist could represent beauty entirely or perfectly. The Lord already did so when he created man. We are his culminating creations because we have been made in his image. We are only able to cultivate a sensitivity to beauty because in our souls lies the very seed of divinity, that seed of the beautiful. Pope John Paul II, in his letter to artists, identified that when God called man into existence, he committed him to the craftsman's task. He says through artistic creativity, man appears more than ever in the image of God. But we, are no, we do not all think of ourselves as artists in the classical sense. However, we do interact with art every day. When we listen to music, or pick up a film, watch our favorite movie, or pick up a novel, we welcome in new thoughts, ideas, and sentiments. Soon they ingrain themselves in our own expressions. Art holds the power to both refresh and redirect our souls. So even in the most simple tasks, when we speak, when we ornament our homes, decorate our workplaces, they are little acts of art because they are reflections of our character, which as Christians, we desire to always reflect Christ. Man has been called to live beautifully. We live as the artwork of God, so that through us, others can seek him. But a work of art can be beautiful in a variety of ways. Beauty is like a scale ranging from the grotesque to sublime. Within it, you will find the pretty things, the lovely things, the winsome and divine. All that falls within the scale reflects the glory of God, but the experience at each point is unique. So on one side lies the sublime, a humbling experience of awe and grandeur. Recently, as my peers and I visited Italy, we saw the Duomo, the David, sunsets from the cliffs of Cinque Terre. I myself was deeply humbled, made acutely aware of my finitude and the presence of magnificence. This is the experience of the sublime. But we enjoy that greatly. While on the other side of the scale lies the grotesque, not to be confused with the ugly or vulgar. Vulgarity intentionally speaks to the vices in our hearts, leading souls to destruction rather than salvation. Grotesque works simply illuminate the more uncomfortable, perhaps painful, realities. They often feature truths that are hard to digest, the Lord's qualities that make us uncomfortable. So consider the spider, 
Its delicate detail and intricacy is a manifestation of the Lord's patience and order. Yet when we share an experience with the spider, most of us are uncomfortable, frightened. So just as reflecting on the nature of the spider is uncomfortable, so too is reflecting directly on the nature of God. His character is not always comforting. In fact, it often shocks, even terrifies. For example, the Lord's judgment is righteous, but to experience it is painful. But at the same time, it is in his nature, so it is good and it is beautiful. Judgment is grotesque. If we approach art the same way, we can both appreciate and respect the spider, understanding pleasure is not art's final end. It is man's reaction to the grotesque and the assumption that beauty must always be pleasurable, which means leads many to believe beauty can be subjective. But the Lord's nature is steadfast and unmoving. Beauty's is too. Beauty can only be objective. This feeling of subjectivity comes in with one's experience. Just as we all have a subjective and personal relationship with God, so too do we have this relationship with beauty. <clears throat> Everyone is attracted to different forms of beauty, and praise the Lord, he made us in unique in that way that the Christian community of artists is not just an echo chamber. Artists have each been uniquely gifted so that through their talents, the Lord can reach all kinds of unique souls. Individual attraction, however, should not stop us from getting to know all the genres of the beautiful so that we can become more familiar with beauty himself. So not being attracted to something does not make it ugly, just as attraction does not make it beautiful. Beauty is the sum of the technique, quality, and intention of a work. Art can look beautiful and feel attractive, but if it calls out to the lusts and sinful desires in our hearts, it leads man not to the character of God, but towards the vicious nature of our flesh. Beauty, then, is an atmosphere permeating through the artwork and all around it, not manifested in just one element. If an artist attempts vulgarity and technique and quality, it is quickly rejected by the senses. It is the vulgarity hiding behind the mask of aesthetic that is most dangerous. Whether an artist calls man to the good or the vicious establishes whether this atmosphere is beautiful or vulgar. So then, even amateurs, which at its source in Latin means to do something for the love of it, can create without this burden of perfection. Certainly some of us are more gifted than others, but we all can rise to the pursuit of excellence. Any creation that glorifies God makes his heart glad. He has called us to make a joyful noise not a perfect one. So artists in the classical sense pursue beauty in every endeavor. And artists as children of God, he has blessed us with a most unique and wonderful task. That is to make a masterpiece of our own lives. That is to live beautifully. Thank you. Mm -hmm.